How long have you been here? In this 1978. Spot? It's 34 years. And I, I can't imagine there were that many houses down here. Uh, there's only a couple more since we've been here. Only a couple more? Yeah. This was always yeah. a hot spot. Yeah, no, Monomoy was always junk. Junk land. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Nobody ever wanted to live in Monomoy. Why is that? Well, it's way over here. It was too far away. Yeah, and my mother said, why do you want to live on a swamp? Now everybody wants to be here, right? Yeah, right. Did, was it, could you buy property back in the 70s real cheap here? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you, you saw it before a lot of other people. Well, my wife did. Oh, I see. Corky is the one who found this. Very nice. And who does the gardens? Corky. Beautiful. Yeah. Therapeutic. Very, very. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what do you got? You, your, your therapy is, is uh, what? Solar. Solar power? Yeah. You're ahead of the curve on that one too, you know, Flint. Put that in 1980. Started. Jeez. And look at us. Yeah, look I at us. I just did an interview with a guy who's a trend watcher. Yeah. And he's European. And he said, get ready. The next best thing is personal solar power. Carry it and around yourself can... and <laughs> power your earphones. Hey, whatever it takes. <laughs> let's take a look at your system. Okay, let's go. Now, why would you put it in the shed and not keep it in the house? Well, we already had solar panels on the roof in the house. Oh, I see. So you got another set We up have in two there. sets, one for hot water and one for electricity. So what do you think? Is that the way to go? Electricity or hot well, water? It's very expensive. Hot water is very cheap these days, but electricity is expensive. The prices are coming down, but... So how much electricity do you make on that? About 40% of our uh, use. Right from that? Yeah. Are you, are you very conservative about energy use too? Pretty much, yeah. Have you always been? Has it been? Well, I think when prices started going up and oil started going up, I. How long have you done the electricity? Uh, since uh, 2008, four years. Four years, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and do you sell it back? Uh, the the meter reverses during the hot sunny days. Yeah. It'll run the meter backwards, but then at night it comes the other way. So there's a net. Uh, expense but it's 40 percent less than i was paying before i would expect that though you would need more panels than that to to supply 40 percent of a household could have had more but i didn't have any place to put them there's, so a, there's a converter inverter and if you tap it, you can see the readings on what it's doing all the time. It takes the electricity from the panels, which is direct current, and converts it to alternating current and feeds it into the meter. Now the setup, was it expensive to do it? It was about uh, $25,000. In 19, uh, 2008? 2008, but there were tax credits of about uh, oh, 6000 so the net cost was about 19000 Okay. And uh, it's going to take a while to pay it back, but all that time, my electric bill is 40% less. And if you were to do it today, would it be cheaper? Probably. Yeah. Because You haven't looked at it? No, but prices have come down. I'm, I would think so. Are the tax credits still available? Uh, well, I'm not sure, actually. Okay. I don't know. All right. But would you encourage other people to, to yes. do it? You yeah. Would. Yeah. All right. Well, what are you doing? You want to go for a ride with me? Yeah, let's go. Okay. What were you doing at a radio station? Well, at, when I was at college, I worked on the student radio station, and I just drifted to one in California. Were you a DJ? No, a producer, production department. And what would you what would you make? Uh, tapes would go out and interview people, and uh, was it a public access kind of channel? Yeah, it was. Oh, oh interesting. Yep. And it didn't pay very well. Well, is that why you got into stockbroking? Yes. Mm -hmm. As soon as I got married, I said, I've got to do something to make money. I mean, I've got expenses now. I've got to pay off Corky's debts. What was Corky doing? Uh, she was a nurse, operating room, uh, uh, emergency room Is nurse. Is that right? UCLA, yeah. She, she, she doesn't do that, though. She No, she didn't do that. Well, she came to Nantucket. She didn't, uh, they wouldn't transfer her license, her registration. <clears throat> so she said, well, I guess I'll just keep raising children. Okay. Well, getting back to, you know, those days in California, were you born there? No, I was born in New Jersey. Okay. So, you're out in California, in Southern Cal, or? Yeah, L.A. Yeah, L.A. 
Did you like it out there? Uh, we liked it for many years, and then uh, it started going downhill. They started building more freeways, and the traffic, and this the smog, is, and the yeah, oh yeah. And they started uh, busing, which uh, you know, from the kids into uh, the inner city, which uh, we didn't like. Okay. And so uh, we left. We came to Nantucket. Now, um, why why didn't you stay as a stockbroker? I kind of lost faith in the market. It, uh, every recommendation out of New York uh, turned out to be wrong, and my own ideas were wrong. My customers were wrong. You know, buy 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 high, sell low. It was and what, what was year happening. was this? Uh, well, we moved here in '77, so uh, it was from '65 <clears throat> to '77. I remember '77 was when I graduated high school, so that was a big year for me. You're just a kid. Yeah. I look a lot older than I am. You do. <laughs> so, so how did you find Nantucket? I mean, how did oh, that? Oh, my family. My family. My grandfather bought a house on Cliff Road in 1915. Oh, that's right. I remember that. And that stayed in the family, and okay. uh, until we regretfully sold it in 1994. I remember that. I remember those days. So, why uh, does this car keep clunking? Because that's that transmission. Oh, it's actually. So what do we do? I've never been down here. This is all private. This is Monomoy. This is all private, yeah. Oh, we can't go any further, can we? Chuck Getschke lives up there. Who's the Getschkes? No, I don't know. He uh, started uh, Adobe Systems. No way. Yeah. Ooh, I'm a big fan of Adobe. I think he's still a uh, executive. I, I use Adobe to, to edit this. Very nice people. Mm -hmm. How many kids did you have at the time? Uh, when we moved, five. And we still have five. So all the kids were born, they were all born out in California. Uh, Libby was born in New Jersey because I was in the stockbroker's training program when she was born and I was in New York and we were living in Princeton and she was born there. But all the others were born in California. All right. And did you know what you were going to do when you got here? No. As a matter of fact, uh, when we, we came here for a winter to see what it was like yeah. and lived in our house on Cliff Road and it was too cold. I mean, it was not really a winter house. It did have oil heat, and the furnace ran all the time. But it was only 10 cents a gallon for oil. That was amazing. Oh, yeah, right. So we put up two years, and then we said, uh, oh, we stayed here one year, and we said, let's not go back. We don't want to go back to California. So we stayed on Nantucket. And what was it like back then? Very quiet. Yeah. Uh, but there were things to do. Uh, we got involved in the school system. The kids were in school. and. Uh, Corky started the Friends of the Schools. Corky didn't want to be a nurse anymore. No, no. He had enough. Well, there was no time for that. You know, five, yeah, with the kids. Five little kids. Sure, sure. When we moved here, Libby was uh, 11 and uh, Willie was uh, three. Did you find real estate right away? Uh, almost. Yeah. Uh, the Denby sold us our house in Monomoy. And uh, oh, so that's after. That's where the, the Denby name came from. That's I correct. See. And after the closing, uh, we were driving home, and Barbara Denby said, what are you going to do now, now that you have a house in Nantucket? And I said, well, I think I'll just retire. And uh, because uh, we could sell our house in California for $300,000, and I thought, well, that'd be that'd Back last then, you could sell it for $300,000? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Very and nice. I said, well, that's enough. I wouldn't have to work again. She said, no, no, no. You come to work for us. You become a broker. So I did. Yeah. And five years later, they said, well, we're going to retire. Do you want to take over the business? And uh, Corky and I said, sure, we'll do that. So all the brokers stayed with us, and uh, we kept going for until, uh, well, recently we set downsized but until 2007, 2008. It came easy to you to yeah, work yeah. in real estate? Yeah, yeah. Because of the stock market uh, uh, sales, experience? Yeah, sales experience. Sales. Actually, uh, when we were in the stock market and... <laughs> And the market would have a bad day. We'd say, oh, God, let's all go into real estate. This would be much better. <laughs> and in fact, when I did that, it was better. I mean, the market doesn't go up and down every 10 minutes. And, uh, you know, it might have cycles every five years or 10 years. But um, those are, that's so, the way life is. So it's kind of like, I mean, you were, you're a salesman, would you say? Would well, you say that? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I never thought of myself that way, but I guess I was. But if you can't sell... What I guess what I'm getting at is if you can't sell something, there's probably you're probably not going to do very well at it. That's correct. Whether it's selling yourself, yeah, or which a lot of it is. Yeah, yeah. it is, isn't it? Yeah, convincing people that you know what you're talking about and that you're honest and right. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, salesmanship is a, a lot. 
it's a lot of personal uh, interest and um, I guess uh, I don't know empathy with the customer as to what they really need and what they want and uh, you know with five kids and they are also I don't know those the, their personalities all seem to they're all different they're, they're different but they're similar too I think they're all about uh, well, most of them seem to work in the community. Yep. Right? Well, four of them do. The baby's in the Navy. How's he doing? He's doing very well. He's, uh, he went to the Citadel from Nantucket High School. And uh, he, he's now a commander. And he's working at CENCOM in Tampa, Florida. And he's got a wife who was uh, Alexis Hull, a Nantucket girl that he knew uh, from here. And they just adopted a two-year-old Russian boy. Wow. And he is the cutest thing you've ever seen. What? Did they go over and, and yep, find and, him? And yep. They had to go over there twice and adopt him. And uh, it was a painful process, but it's worked out very well, and they're very happy. All right. So, so here you are in the 70s, five kids, started doing real estate. Um, when did you actually find that uh, you liked being part of the steamship. How long have you been, I mean, are, you are the liaison, right? I'm, right? I'm the Nantucket member of the Steamship Authority. There are five members that operate the Steamship Authority. And uh, one from each port, uh, Martha's Vineyard, Hyannis, uh, Woods Hole or Falmouth, and New Bedford. And Nantucket is five. And I'm the Nantucket member. Uh, I always I always loved the Nobska and uh, loved to ride on it. And uh, uh, when we would come to Nantucket with the five kids, we'd fly east and then get on the boat in Woods Hole, come to Nantucket, and you could rent a stateroom for five dollars, put the kids wow. in it. Wow. Yeah, oh, it was wonderful. And I love that whistle, that steam whistle. Yes, I know you do. So, uh, You were very instrumental in having that same whistle put on the steamship. I, have, I heard it this morning. I have to admit that I, that I uh, convinced the uh, friends of Nobska to lend it to the Steamship Authority. And I convinced the authority to put it on the Eagle. We don't have any steamboats anymore, but we, we could save that whistle, so we did. That was a good move. I think so. I love it. I hear it every morning at 6.30. I got to blow it the other day. <laughs> yeah, I did. We were coming back from uh, Hyannis, and uh, they invited me up to the bridge. And uh, as we are coming into Nantucket Harbor, and I said, uh, when we go around Brand Point, can I blow that whistle? And they said, oh, sure. It's very tough to do. It's a, it's a real pull on the cord. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's very resistant. And because so, it's it's a true steam whistle, too. It, it, it's yeah. not just a fake. No, it's no. It's really generating steam somewhere, Well, right? no. No, oh. it's, it's operated by air. Oh, oh, by yeah, air now. Yeah, okay. There's no All steam right. on the Eagle, so okay. it has to be operated of by course, air. Of course, okay. So it's, uh, but impressive. you really have to pull hard. <laughs> and uh, so I blew it along in two shorts, like they used to do at Brand Point. And uh, several people uh, called me and said, hey, was that you? <laughs> That's that was fun. Great. That is great.